Welcome to Cure Aquatics and Exotics. My name's Susie, and today I'm going to be going over planted tank maintenance. It's a little different than my gravel tanks or my bare bottom tanks, and since it needs a pretty good trimming, I thought what better way to explain how I take care of and how I maintain a planted tank. So come along with me, Susie Q. Hey. Now, I did not create this planted tank, but it was so graciously given to me uh, by somebody who was giving up contact at our Bucks County Aquarium Society, and I was able to, um, I was originally just going to take the uh, fish and give the tank over to the Aquarium Society, but this was so set up so amazing that I decided uh, I want to keep it. So I talked to the Bucks County Aquarium Society, and they were fine with it. So I didn't get it this overgrown. I have been unable to do some of my regular tank maintenance because I'm one-handed, but I'm going to try to trim this down left-handed. So let me get started. So there's a few things that I got to do differently with this tank than I would with a gravel tank. A gravel tank, I would scrape down the sides and just start gravel backing, cleaning up the ground and the sides drain the water out and refill it. Now I can't stick the python, I can't stick my uh, suction deep down into the substrate because it's dirt. Well, it's aquatic dirt. So I'll show you what I do there. But first I'm gonna try to trim some of this, grab as much as I can. I'm, I am going to propagate it because this is a stem cell and this is pearl weed. Oh my gosh. I just absolutely love it. I've never been able to get pearl weed to look like this, so I'm, I'm very happy to have this tank. So the first thing I'm going to do is take off the lid. Because uh, I am one-handed, I'm going to keep that light on. Hopefully you'll be able to see. So I just tilted the light off. What I'm going to do is take these shears, these scissors that are a little bent, make it easier for me to trim like this and get it straight because if I'm using the straight scissors I'd have to get my hand straight down there parallel and that's a lot harder plus the fact that I'm working with my left hand and I'm right handed that could make it a little hard and I don't want to hurt any of the fish in the process so what I'm going to do is as I cut I'm going to pull out whatever I can I might even use my hands I put a little bit of water in here so that as I'm cutting the plants now, I did ask John to help me, but he's not home, and we keep getting sidetracked, so I'm going to try to do this on my own. So if it comes out a little crooked, hmm. So over here, I'm also going to be using a net, because pearl weed is pretty tiny. Uh, you know what I forgot to do, guys? I forgot to turn off the filter. I need to turn off the filter because it's just going to keep moving everything around. There we go. So what was happening is it was blowing it in to the center part here. So let me talk a little bit about pearl weed. Like I said, it is a stem plant. So I would say there's a lot less maintenance with a heavily planted tank as far as water changes go, but it's a lot more intense with if you have a fast growing plant. There's a lot of plants, aquatic plants that are slower growing, like some crypts, the microsword. Not the slow growing, it doesn't get that that big. Let's keep going. This is a lot easier with two hands and using your dominant hand. So much easier. But I did the best I could to trim it down. Now I'm going to make sure there's nothing on the sides, but this tank is so healthy and balanced. I know there's no algae on the sides or anything. My sink is broken. So I am going to use a bucket, the old school method. Once I fill it with water, all right. 
So now there is a siphon. So I am going to take this and go down as far as I can without getting in the dirt. See it? I'm kind of hovering, giving small amounts of pressure, but at the same time keeping an eye on this barrel. Tilt this right side up so I don't lose all that. There we go. I can't even. I thought I turned the, this off. Maybe I didn't. So, I'm going to dump this water. Through here, just in case I wasn't paying attention and caught any fish. So now, I can go through that priming up the hose again, or I can be very careful. And push it right down. I can get any in my mouth. I wish I had another bucket. Get the, yep, siphon's still going. See how I just rested it in there? Kept all the water in the tube, which means all the siphon is still going. Now I'm getting ready to fill up the tank using my python. I use tap water with my python, except for I go through a carbon blocker. This takes out a lot of the chlorines and some of the other um, contaminants. So I just hook this up. John's going to hook this up for me and then to the sink. And then all my water goes through this first before going to my fish tank. And this is just an RV water filter, uh, but it works great. I use it down in the basement in the fish room too. So let's get this filled up. And and make sure it's the right temperature. And then I'm going to plug this in. Trying to get any floaters to come out. There we go. Got a couple floaters that came off. And we'll catch a fish. And then I'm going to turn on the uh, filter again. I might have to prime it up. We'll see how. Give it a couple seconds. You do have to prime it. Ouch. Let's put some water back here. I'll climb it up. So now we're going to let this run for a little bit and see if it clears up. Let's see how long it takes to clear up. So I can see that it's clearing up already. The plants look much better. I think in about three weeks I'll do it again. Because it got so overgrown, I'm just going to do it in piecemeal. So here are some. I'm going to see if I can take this aqua soil, plant some of this, and put it in an aquarium and see if I can get it to grow. Because I am building a terrarium and I would love this on the floor of that terrarium. So I'm going to get out the tweezers. Because right-handed tweezers are easier for me, but I don't know about left. 
This is very hard because nothing is straight up and down. So after trying my best to put one by one or two by two of these cuttings root side down into this substrate in the ceramic pot, I got very frustrated. And so I was able to do about 50 or 60 of them. I might need a squirt bottle. Because you got to keep it moist. Yes, I said moist. And I will put it right here in the corner. With this light I control every day. But then I just change plans for the rest of the cuttings. I really want to try. I don't want to waste it. I'm putting it in my frog tank. It has very little water, but we'll see. Okay, let's go take a look at that frog tank, huh? So I got some fire belly frogs in here. This pearl weed is not in the ground. It is sitting in about a half inch, one inch of water. We're going to see what happens. The other pearl weed is sitting here that was actually planted. And that is in my Fajaca tank. So we'll see how that works out. And as we can see, this tank is clearing up beautifully. And I was able to take about one to two inches off. I love looking at the comparison. This is before. This is after I trimmed it. Before. And after. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Nah, nah, hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. So come along with me. Said I'm Susie Q.